Well, hello there, folks. How you doing? How's it going out there? What day is it today? Saturday. Saturday night. How's it going? Any pubs to go to? Are the pubs open yet? I don't know what's the story in the pubs. You have to go in, but you have to do track and trace and all that shit. So I've got my water. It's clunking with the ice. I've got my iHeart in my mug. We're good to go. Hello, Stephen Magner. It's good to have you here. Uh, yeah, so tonight, seeing as how I've done plain facts and last night I've done some Nob Stewart poems, today I thought I would do a wee skit from another ebook I've got. That ebook is this one. It's called Politically Incorrected. And uh, yeah, so it's available on that website at the bottom, billywatson.us. So that's what, what the skit is from. Uh, aye, you missed last night. It's too late for you. I never gave good warning. I wasn't going to do one. Then I think it was about 20 past 10 or something. I said, ah, fuck it. We'll do some knob poems. And uh, so there wasn't a fair warning on that end. But I think you liked the pre, uh, the replay or the the stream afterwards. So I don't know if you actually watched it. But thanks for liking it anyway. Eight folks, so you're all out there. This, uh, so this get conspiracy theories, I suppose we better get to the job in hand. I'm going to basically go to another screen so I can't see myself, but you'll be able to see me and read the writing. It's fairly long and they'll probably go off in tangents and I might come back to see some comments now and again rather than me just read straight through it. I thought I'd uh, see how it goes. Ken, play it by ear. So good to have you here. I guess let's get started. Conspiracy theories. This is why I actually started doing stand-up comedy was because I'd watched Bill Hicks. So I had no idea what to do comedy. I just got on stage and talked and I apparently had the right material. So I think this is one of the first things I wrote because back then I was trying to wake up friends and family, which I'm still trying to do and it's still only listening. So maybe a few of you will be able to resonate with the ideas in this. Conspiracy theories. First bits about Bill Hicks. I've got subheadings, so I've, I think I've took them out of the book, but I've still got to see the finished version of the book, so who knows? See me. I love Bill Hicks. Well, before he turned into Alex Jones, that is. Now, basically, I never used to have the Alex Jones bit in it, but subsequently, and there's been lots of videos on the internet, isn't there, of Bill Hicks turning into Alex Jones. He's got the same teeth and the same ear, and he was working with uh, Kevin Booth, and he has the same limp. Uh, Bill Hicks had his leg broken and if you see Alex Jones walking he walks with a limp as well and plus Alex Jones has admitted it on several occasions and it's like a in joke so it's a bit of a weird gin but go check out the videos about that Bill Hicks and Alex Jones if you're interested in that wee conspiracy theory hi next gin if you haven't heard of Bill Hicks may I suggest you get a fucking life and buy all his CDs and videos immediately before DVDs hi and play them repeatedly until you get the fucking message. See, I wasn't actually trying to make people laugh. I was just ranting at them. So you'll, you'll get the just the... I've done an act called The Great White Shaft when I was performing this. It was quite... It went well sometimes. Other times, not so well. It's because I watched so much Bill Hicks that, first of all, I wanted to be a comedian. See? And secondly, I really, really, really wanted to start a revolution. Watching too much Bill Hicks can have that effect on you. Now, again, subsequently, I kind of wondered about Bill Hicks. Uh, was he an agent? Was Alex jo Is Alex Jones an agent? You can. Well, that kind of shit. But anyway, but you have to be careful, though, because I found out that the saying that what you fight to become is true because I was turning into a bit of a fascist dictator myself. It's like why I, I try not to get embroiled in uh, you know, Facebook arguments and the Falkirk Herald and stuff like that. I try and act reasonable when lots of people are abusing me because they want to get into a fight. But I just didn't want to be the other side of that coin, basically. I didn't care if people laughed or not. As I said, <laughs> that was a byproduct. Uh, if they did, they did, you know, or not. I just demanded if uh, they join, they quit their jobs and join my revolution. Basically, stop working for the man. You know, I quit working for the man, so I needed to become a comedian pretty quick. 
When they didn't, I got rather upset. I wanted to take them outside for a fight, and that was so unlike me, because I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I've got spaghetti-like arms anyway, you know? I've not spent a lot of time in the gym, working on my bod. Aye. <laughs> Is that right, sweetheart? I don't need to there. Fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Push-ups is my speciality. I just don't move my arms. <laughs> I can hardly fight my way out of a paper bag, so I'm not going to be much use against the police with rubber bullets and tear gas. They've got a slight advantage when it comes to the revolution fight, you know. I guess I still do want to start a revolution, but now it wouldn't be a typical revolution with fighting in the streets and all that. Oh, no. The revolution I would like to start would be a revolution of love. How's it with that, people? Shall we have a revolution of love? Everybody increase their vibration to a more loving state and then we'd have no need for hate. Not that wishy-washy kind of love, obviously, you know, that fucking Boyzone or Westlife or any of those fucking half-witted tosspots sing about. You can, your boy bands that sign up to fucking suck the sa uh, cock of Satan, to quote Bill Hicks. I'm talking uh, more of a Led zeppelin -y kind of love. You know, Led zeppelin yeah. Even though they were still uh, serving Satan, but still, that kind of love. But minus the, the Satan, but, you know. I got a whole lot of love. Do, 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 do. I got a whole lot of love. Do, 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 do. I'm going to give you my love. Do, 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 do. Every inch of my fucking love. You know? Basically, love with a nice big pair of hairy balls attached to it. Or shaving balls. That's quite the thing these days. Whatever, you know. Big balls attached to it. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. Who, who likes hairy balls these days? I don't know. <laughs> love that takes no shit. Because if you truly loved yourself, you wouldn't need to bend over and take Satan's cock up your arse every day. That's why I'm not wearing a mask at work, because it felt like Satan was fucking ramming his fucking cock in my throat. So, how are we doing so far? Uh, not a lot of comments. Is anyone still watching? Let me get back to this fucking screen. Right. Hi. Good evening and thanks. Hello, Nikki. We're here. Why is it went back to... I wasn't even showing the fucking... Oh, my God. Sorry, folks. I thought you were seen. You should have been... Oh, what a fuck up. I've been reading something there. Emma, you should have been telling me. Shall we start again? Hi. None of you have even said anything. He's actually watching this. I uh, just when you seen that, were you? I was flicking through a fucking thing. Uh, all these slides. Right. From the top then, well, I'll just read it from the top. I uh, was through the fucking interjections. Hello, Debbie. If you've just joined, Harry Ball Love. I uh, you know Stephen Magner still likes the Harry Ball. Right. I'm going to pile through this for the start. Sorry about that, folks. Just to get it kind of so me, I'm saying it with the lyrics beside me. It's off the cuff. I've not rehearsed, right? Sorry, here we go. Come on. See me, I love Bill Hicks. Well, before he turned into Alex Jones, that is. If you haven't heard of Bill Hicks, may I suggest you get a fucking life and buy all his CDs and videos immediately and play them repeatedly until you get the fucking message. It's because I watched so much Bill Hicks that first of all, I wanted to be a comedian and secondly, I really, really wanted to start a revolution. Watching too much Bill Hicks can have that effect on you. But you have to be careful though, because I found out that the saying, what you fight you become is true. Because I was turning in, turning into a bit of a fascist dictator myself. Like fucking Nicola. When they didn't, I got rather upset. I wanted to take them outside for a fight. When they didn't join my revolution. And that was so unlike me, because I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I've got spaghetti-like arms anyway. I can hardly fight my way out of a paper bag, so I'm not going to be much use against the police with rubber bullets and tear gas. I guess I still do want to start a revolution, but now it wouldn't be a typical revolution with fighting in the streets and all that. Oh no. The revolution I would like to start would be a revolution of love. Not that wishy-washy kind of love that fucking Boyzone or Westlife or any of those fucking half-witted tosspots sing, ab sing about. I'm talking... More of a Led zeppelin -y kind of love. I've got a whole lot of love. Do, 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 do. I've got a whole lot of love. Do, 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 do. I'm going to give you my love. Do, 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 do. Every inch of my fucking love. When I used to do that live, I used to put quite a lot of emphasis on that fucking love. But anyway. 
Love with a nice big pair of hairy balls attached to it, you know? None of this fucking pussy love. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. Aye? Where are we? Love that takes no shit, because if you truly loved yourself, you wouldn't bend over and take Satan's cock up your arse every day. I think we're up to speed. Let me get back to the screen. How are you guys doing? You're still hanging in there, right? We're hanging in, folks, aye? Right, cool. Have a wee drink of my MIT. So now we're going to talk about the peaceful protest against globalisation. The next hidden bit. I'll come back to you at the next hidden. And if you want to do any comments in the meantime, I'll comment on them then. All right, here we go. So to get my revolution off the ground, uh, these writings are a kind of peaceful protest against what is known as globalisation. You can? Globalisation. And all the things... Uh, hold on. That go along with that. But before I start, could I just ask, uh, are there any police officers watching this? Some police officers. Any police officers out there? Uh, I hope not, because I don't want to be shot through the head for my peaceful protest. Like that guy in Genoa. Remember back in Genoa, that was one of the first ones with the protest marchers fighting the police. Remember that? That poor guy just thought he'd have a nice day out with his friends doing a little peaceful protest against huge corporations taking over the world. He maybe made a placard up that said down with evil empires or something. Maybe he started singing some songs even like, you know, we shall overcome, we shall overcome. No, you fucking shan't. <laughs> Bang, bullet, <laughs> straight through his head. You can? Straight through his fucking head. The guy's now pan breed. Totally deed. I, you know, I don't want to really take this peaceful protest in that far. I mean, fuck that for a laugh. I thought that was a bit harsh myself. I don't know about you, you can, but I thought having a wee placard and a sing song and then getting a bullet bounced off you and killing you was maybe an extreme reaction. What do you think? Uh, so that's why these days when you do the common law stuff in the Article 61, they recommend uh, not doing, going to the protest because that's given an excuse for police to fucking start a fight with you. You should rather do it by paper and uh, call them out in their treason in the lawful way, basically. What are you saying there, David Nickel? Good to have you here. They are no saying, Billy. I'm not sure what that means. And uh, everyone else is listening. Hello. So, conspiracy theories. Let's continue. Next bit of the skit. You see, as well as watching a lot of Bill Hicks, I'm also really interested in reading about conspiracy theories. I think that's my biggest problem. Can I just issue a word of warning for any of you out there <coughs> who may be thinking about reading uh, you know, some conspiracy theories yourself? It can make you a bit paranoid, I must admit. <coughs> it can make you a bit paranoid. I now think everything is a conspiracy, and I mean everything. I even think the overuse of the phrase conspiracy theory is a fucking conspiracy. That's how fucked up in the heat I am. To give you an example, one day I really, 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 really wanted to make an omelette, okay? I don't know where this urge came from, but I just had this omelette craving from hell. So I rushed out the house to buy some eggs, as you would, if you want an omelette. So I got to the shop and said, hello, mate, I'm just in for some eggs. Uh, Hold on, the shopkeeper said. I was like, what? He said, uh, we've got no eggs left. It's like, no eggs left? Okay, never mind. So I went to another shop and they had run out of eggs. Hmm, a bit spooky. Then I went to another shop and another. It turned out there wasn't a single egg not one single egg left in the whole fucking village. I thought to myself, fucking hell, the bastards are trying to stop me making a fucking omelette now. What the fuck is the world coming to? Get what I mean? Then I realised it was actually Easter Sunday and instead they'd made all the Christians buy eggs, boil them, paint them and roll them down hills for no apparent reason. So I thought to myself, okay, okay, fair enough. I'll just have a jam sandwich instead. Thankfully, there was still some bread left in the shop. The Christians never managed to get their hands on all the bread. 
so they could pretend they were eating the body of Christ. You can Fucking sickos, you know? Fucking, what's going on there? As if pretending to eat his flesh wasn't bad enough when he eats body of Christ, the bread, and they're fucking all chomp, or chomping some Jesus. As if that wasn't bad enough. They also like to simulate the act of drinking his blood. What kind of fucked up cannibalistic rituals have been going on in the church all these years? That's what I want to know. Mind you, drinking his blood might just be a good excuse for a piss up. There's always that in. All the holier than now society do-gooders who only go to church to be seen there by their fellow local community of fellow pretend do-gooders, you can. What, me? Me? Drink? Oh no, no, I don't drink. Just a couple of bottles of Jesus' blood every Friday night and Sunday morning. Hi. It's good for the soul, you know, it's good for the soul. And it makes sitting through two hours of that boring bastard of a priest a hell of a lot easier. Aye, so you've got to get pissed. Maybe I would go to church if they're giving away a couple of bottles of wine. Aye. Ah, if any boys in blue are watching, aye, that's true. The boys in blue. Actually, in saying that, well, well reminded, David, because somebody tagged me in the other day and said, if this guy is your friend, because they had 65 people who were uh, mutual friends with this guy, and I was one of them. Apparently, he was an undercover cop, and they were just checking out whose Facebook profile to shut down and all that. I'm sure they've got other ways to fucking check out your Facebook directly rather than get some cop to friend you up, but I guess we should be more careful. I just kind of check someone's profile now, and if they're not wearing a mask and they've posted something about fucking a virus being a scam, then I say, all right, you must be cool. Aye. Stephen Magners, Jesus is coming. Quick, fill the bath. <laughs> this punter will sort us out with plenty of wine. Fucking pronto, tonto, aye. <laughs> That's a good tune, isn't it? What about the metaphors of these things? That's what gets lost, the actual real meaning, because Jesus spoke in parables, doesn't, didn't he? So I don't know if it was actual water into wine. And maybe the water coming out the tap these days, you'd need to be a fucking miracle worker to turn that into fucking drinkable shit. Aye? So anyway, talk to friends. This is a bit about you know, trying to get your friends to wake up to the conspiracy. Here we go. When I first started reading about all this conspiracy stuff, I was totally shocked and stunned. I couldn't believe what I was reading, and I wanted to share it with my friends and colleagues just to see what they thought about it, as you know, as you probably would do yourself when you find out shit like this. So I tried talking to my friends about it. I said, hey guys, I've been reading some mad shit about the Freemasons and the Skull and Bone Society and the New World Order. Do you fancy having to read some of these books and let me know your you know, considered opinion? But uh, they just didn't want to know. They weren't fucking interested at all in the slightest. It was remarkable. As David Coleman would say, remarkable. <laughs> They just said, oh, for fuck's sake, Billy, for fuck's sake, give us peace, will ya? Give us peace. We just want to drink our beer and watch football and communicate to each other by saying, what's up? What's up? All the time. We don't want to listen to you and your paranoid conspiracy theories. Basically that what's up, what's up, what's up was an advert back in the day of uh, Budweiser and fucking... It was just arseholes drinking bud saying what's up. It was quite popular. Uh, anyway, if truth be told, I was quite taken back, aback by their apathetic attitude. So I said, look, just because a multi-million dollar Hollywood film company made a film called Conspiracy Theory, starring that Australian Scotsman fella, Mel Wallace, doesn't mean to say that every conspiracy story is just some theory plucked from thin air or that every so-called conspiracy theorist is an escaped mental patient like Mel Gibson was in the fucking movie, he kind of, he kind of set the fucking president it doesn't mean to say that everyone that talks about conspiracy theories is an escaped mental patient alright I said it's purely by coincidence that I'm an escaped mental patient so there's always that in this thing keeps jumping. Anyway, but they just said, 
Look, man, what's up? What's up? You have a bird, watch the game. What's up? What's up? Did anybody about it? Let's talk about fantasy football. Did anybody about the virus? There is, there's a virus coming, but we'll not talk about it. We'll just mask up, even though you're no masking up, and we'll not talk about it. We'll talk about fantasy football. <laughs> I said, okay, guys, okay, guys, fine, fine. If you want to remain Teletubbies for the rest of your natural born lives, that's fine with me. Free will and all that. I'll go and find someone else to talk to. Hopefully, I could find someone with more than two brain cells to rub together. Although, granted, that rules out about 90% of the population right there. Aye, I'm a realist. I think 90% has been generous. So, there's that bit. That's your talk of the friends. You have much of the same opinion, guys? Uh, had the exact same experience. Now I couldn't give a fuck about apathy. <laughs> Apart from the plastic, any idea there's anything in bottled water that may cause long-term harm? I think bottled water, even though I do buy bottled water from Tesco's, I should really buy a fucking distiller. But um, I don't drink water at the tap because it was tasting bogging. So this is the Tesco, but I'm sure it's got some shit in it as well. As well as the plastic effect, that doesn't do any good. Maybe we should all get your water and, you know, pray into it, basically give feelings of love into it. Because there was those experiments done by the Japanese guy who basically, you know, uh, showed you the different crystalline structure of water when it had different thoughts projected onto it. And we're all basically made of water. So again, if we go back to loving each other and resonate at that frequency, then the world would be a much better place. It starts with. Uh, this, the nature of reality. I also, I, I recommend Don and David's book quite a lot, but there's this one here they've wrote. This is by Don and David as well. Don Lester, David Parker, The Nature of Reality. Well, look, look, look. Hey. It's an autograph version. But this is the kind of shit that the politicians and all that, the, the elite control us by. And that's this is the surface level stuff I wanted to talk to my friends about, you know, the Bilderberg Group and Council on Foreign Relations. But actually, we have to take it back to the source. Shall we continue? Have you drink first? So, talk to mum. So I thought, who could I talk to that would, <coughs> that would at least have an intelligent conversation about these matters? Oh, I know. I'll go and talk to my mum. Surely she will listen to me. After all, she is quite intelligent, and I am the fruit of her loins. So I phoned my mum up and said, Hello, mum. Any chance of dinner? She said, OK, I'll stick some fish fingers under the grill. This was before I went vegan, obviously. I'm not strictly vegan, but the idea of veganism. Anyway, when I'm at her house, I didn't get an option. So I was like, great, I'll be there in 30 minutes. I trust you've got some HP brown sauce. Now, there's uh, well, that wasn't product placement or anything. The, your HP brown sauce is better than the other ones, but anyway. <laughs> so it's quite specific, right? I do like the HP brown sauce, but she, what she does, she buys one ball of HP brown sauce, then buys all these other cheap ones, and when the HP one gets empty, she fills it up with the cheap ones, so people think they're getting the HP. It's, again, it's all in the mind. <laughs> she probably read that book. <laughs> so I went over to her house, and halfway through dinner, I thought... What did I think? Hmm. How am I going to bring this subject up? It's quite a dodgy subject, this, isn't it? The conspiracy theories to kind of bring up at the dinner table. Mainly because people don't want to hear the truth. That's the basically bottom line there, you can. They have been brainwashed since birth to depend on the system. And if you talk outside the program norm, then you are ostracized for upsetting the apple cart, is basically what's going on. But fuck it, I thought. I'm just going to go for it. I said, Mum. I've got some really, 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 really bad news for you. I laid it on thick. Really bad news. She said, what, what? Don't tell me. Are, 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 oh, my God. Are they, are they going to are they going to cancel EastEnders? <laughs> Please. Because <laughs> that's the worst thing that could happen in her world. She wasn't actually watching EastEnders, but I just put that in as an example for your average mother, you can, or housewife. But she did, does watch other shit, so maybe she does watch EastEnders by now after house arrest for eight months, you can. Anyway. I said, no, mum, no, no, nothing quite as tragic as that. I don't even care, are they still making any standards? Is that still ongoing? How are they still boxing and shit when the referee's wearing a mask and the two boxers aren't they? You've got to ask yourself that, Ian. Anyway, I said to my mum, no, no, nothing quite as tragic as that. 
I said, Mum, you know how your grandpa died in the trenches during the First World War? She was like, yes. And you know how your dad was killed during the Second World War? You know, my granddad, when uh, his parachute failed to open, he landed on the very tip of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yes, it was terrible, terrible, absolutely terrible that was. Trust you to bring that up. What a way for the family to get their 15 minutes of fame, eh? There he was trying to murder some German people he didn't know from Adam for the good of his country, this fictitious country, the illegal fucking government, you can, it's just a corporation, and he ended up being impaled to death by the world's biggest phallic symbol, aye? Oh my goodness golly, you know, at the time it was anyway, probably bigger ones since then, like your Empire State Building and whatnot. Oh, the irony, the irony, it's fucking unbelievable, aye? I don't know exactly how it was ironic, but I just thought I'd get her to say that. Maybe she thought it was. Anyway, anyway, mum, I've come across some very getting back to the case in hand. I've got some uh, come across some very inf important information that very strongly suggests. I was putting it mildly. Very strongly suggests, if not proves beyond question, that the two fucking sides. And the two fucking world wars were funded and controlled by the same group of fucking people. People we never get to hear about in the fucking mainstream media. People like uh, Prescott Bush, IBM, you know, all these banks, Farnham Bank or whatever the fuck they're called, and how the CIA and, you know, they're all linked together and, that, and uh, they all fund the war, the military industrial complex, you know? People we never get to hear about, though. We don't hear about those in the nightly news. What do you think about that, mother dear? And do you know what my dear old mum said? God bless her. Came out, she said, my dear old mummy. She said, oh my God. Oh my God, that's disgraceful. That is absolutely shocking. How dare you swear in my house like that? Huh. Go and wash your mouth out with soap and water this instant, young man. And that's three pounds for the swear box. Oh my God, that's what a, what a language. That's terrible. So it is. If you keep talking like that, We'll soon be able to afford the World at War commemorative box set on DVD. Aye, it's got that special footage of fucking my dad fucking impersonating himself in the world's biggest phallic symbol. It's a must buy, you know? <laughs> I was like, hold on a mother, uh, minute, mum, uh, you didn't quite get that, did you? You didn't quite get that. So, anyway, religion and politics, we'll come back to that then. How's it going? Uh, where are we? Hello, Craig Steele, good to have you here. Stephen Magner says, the surface level stuff is often the most difficult to explain to folk. Can't, can't see what's in front of them, I. As I just said, I tried to say to my mother there, you know, the banks are funded and all she hears is my swearing. It's very surface level. HB sauce and a bacon rolled. <laughs> Guilty pleasure of the world's worst veggie. That's the thing. That's the one that people always say gets you back the the bacon butty with a bit of HP sauce in it. Yeah, it's the guy Masuru Emoto, the hidden messages in water. Thank you for that one, Chris. Henry Ford as well. I'm not sure exactly what part you're referring to, but yeah, he was well connected and all that. So, shall we continue? Although he did try to fight the Federal Reserve a bit, I believe, Henry Ford. So, Let's go. Cool. Religion and politics. Oh. So I tried a different approach. I said, okay, mum, okay, mum. You know that church that you go to so religiously every week? How about the fact that the hierarchy of that church know full well that what they preach is, in fact, a load of baloney? and that has been used throughout the ages to install fear into the masses and to imprison people spiritually, not to set them free at all. I mean, I don't know about you folks, but to me, the church is a bit like an insurance company, don't you think? It's like, aye, aye, come on in, come on in, for only £15 a month, a couple of Hail Marys and your free-thinking mind, we'll give you a lifetime's guarantee on a great afterlife. The church. We're here to help. Just don't ask us to help any of the homeless or starving people in this lifetime with the millions we have in our coffers. Oh no. 
those Pope hats, they don't come cheap, you know. Or those limited edition Pope mobiles from Ferrari, they didn't come cheap. Three inch thick, the glass on those things. Fucking not, not cheap at all in the slightest. Or those extra tough Durex we use for shagging young boys up the arse. You can? Don't come fucking cheap, you know. We're going through them like the clappers right now. It's fucking unbelievable. It's fucking no real. In fact, due to cutbacks in the Vatican, a lot of the priests are having to actually go bareback. Hi. And you want us to help the starving or homeless? Unbelievable. We've got problems of our own, you know. Got to feel sorry for the Vatican, eh? And then I said to my mum, oh yeah, mum. I said, and another thing, what about the fact that the government knows that the education system was designed from the outset, because it was based on the Prussian education system, which was to get soldiers to do exactly what they said and not question who they were killing. Uh, it was to keep people in ignorance and has since dumbed down the population to the point where they are really not much more than the useless eaters the so-called elites refer to us as, because they're certainly not the clever thinkers. Let's put it that way. It's also to convince children at an early age into believing that life is shit. It's like Monday to Friday, some bossy cunt tells you what to do, and if you're good, you get let out to play for the weekend. Oh la, fucking la. Well, mum, what do you think of that? Excuse the swear words. And do you know what my dear old mum said? Do you know what she said? She said, now, now, Billy, come on, come on, you know the rules, you know the rules. No talking about religion or politics in my house, please. It only leads to arguments. Ha! Huh. Only Lisa, I mean, I mean, what chance have you got? Jesus Christ, I mean, holy shit. I mean, seriously, what chance do you have? Who the hell invented that saying anyway? No talking about religion or politics. I think it was politicians and priests myself. Because if we did talk about it, we would very soon realise we're getting a huge double-ended dildo rammed up our jacksy every single day of our pathetic little lives. That's right. I said pathetic little lockdown housebound fucking wear a mask lives. The fact that we vote for our slave masters proves that beyond question. Oh I so I got a bit passionate about that in. Where are we? Henry Ford supplied engines to Hitler in World War Two. Yep, exactly, connected in the gang and all that. It's all about finance and them being at the top and us being about to be culled. Uh, Stephen says, religion and politics are two things we're advised not to speak about exactly. And didn't forget the hula, 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 hamuna, hamuna. <laughs> the, two, the two perfect points to start a convo. Yep. Uh, big Pope fish hats, that's right. Those fucking fish hat things. Goes back to what's the worship of the fish hat? Who's the deity? It's a particular deity, isn't it? It's no Molek, because that's the owl. Anyway, you can probably tell me. Wouldn't mind some limited time in the Vatican archives. Apparently, according to Stephen D. Kelly, the Vatican archives are under the Getty, but apparently, since then, apparently, a lot of the treasures in the Getty are getting moved to Scotland. Uh, probably, you know, remember in the back in the day, Scottish Rite and... Uh, what they call fucking Rosalind Chaplin and all that. Politicians are the priests of modern telly. Well, certainly, it does seem like a religion, the fucking belief in scientism, and it all comes through the TV, which is just... It goes beyond a priest. I guess they are preaching to you. I guess priests were brainwashing with their shit, and the media's brainwashing with their shit. Coincidentally enough, the next part's called Media Lies. So, let's continue. Hope you're enjoying the show. Media lies. I think the media is part of the conspiracy. I think it lies to us big time. You think? I wrote this over 25 years ago. It's no hard to figure out. For instance, I've been reading these weird books for about six or seven years now, and it turns out that nearly every newspaper article I've read in my life has some falsehood in it to one degree or another, every single article. In fact, there has only been one article that I can remember reading that was 100% categor categorically, categorically, can't even say it, 
categorically, <laughs> categorically true. And that was the Freddy Star ate my hamster story. We thought the Sunday sport was talking pish, but in that case, they were 100% right. The rest I take with a pinch of salt, even the rest of Sunday sports. Apparently, Russia, no, it wasn't Russia, China put a flag on the moon the other day. And then I had this BBC article where they actually showed you the American flag on the fucking moon with an astronaut there. And it showed you, they had the cheek to show you the lunar landing module behind them as if they fucking landed on the moon with that piece of scaffolding. I, I thought that's quite fucking balls that you put that out there. That's how fucking deluded people are. They can't figure out that that wasn't a fucking flying machine. And that, there was actually a video of Stanley Kubrick about a 45 second clip admitting directly without saying, saying, I'm not joking, I literally shot the moon landings. So there you go. He died the same year, coincidentally enough. So anyway, we'll continue. The rest I take with a pinch of salt. So we'll continue. Think you can handle your conspiracy theories. Why are people so adverse to hearing a different viewpoint? I don't believe all the shit I read about, but at least I think it's worth talking about, you know, as adults as opposed to ostriches. Occasionally, hold on, as opposed to ostriches. Yeah. Oh. Occasionally, I do find someone who is willing to chat about these things. For instance, I, I met a guy on a training course uh, I was on who mentioned to me that he read the Michael Moore book, Stupid White Men. I said to him, ah, so you think you can handle your conspiracy theories, eh? I mean, that's your starter for 10 books there. Michael Moore's in the gang as well, obviously. I came back to him the next day. I said, read these books, watch these videos. Uh, when he returned them the following week, he was like, aye, that stuff's a bit mad, Billy. I said, aye, that's your starter for 10. I'm not finished with you yet. Here, read these books and watch these videos. Two weeks later, he was a paranoid wreck. He couldn't leave his house, basically, aye? He just hides under his covers saying, help, help, the aliens are coming. The reptile aliens are coming. We're all doomed. Doomed, I say. His friends have disowned him and his mum doesn't invite him around for tea anymore. Not even for fish fingers or prune sauce. Soon's familiar, it sure does. I have reassured him that it's just an awakening process he is going through and that he will be stronger at the other end of it. But that's not much consolation, though, consolation to him right now. Soon he will realise he has to find his true path in life and spread love unreservedly into everyone he meets in his daily day. It's just that first he will need to summon the courage to come out from underneath his covers. That's all. He'll get there one day. It took me a couple of years. Then the world will be uh, like his own adventure playground to enable him to create a life of unbridled joy and abundance. Obviously, once we fucking take the reptiles out. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's my website over there. Antichrist. Kim is here. Hello, Kim. Uh, and my wee pal, Carol Ann. Hello, Carol Ann. Nice to have you here. Speak the truth about what's going down in the world today. People think we've lost the plot. I <laughs> had a tiff with my sister as a nurse because I questioned her on her oath and standing on sovereignty of the people. She went nuts and put the phone down anyway. People are triggered. They're massively controlled. They can't handle... It's basically cognitive dissonance. They're all their fucking brains frying. It just doesn't go down well at all. Because, as I said, deep down they know the truth and they've got a fucking big wall that they're holding in place, but there's fucking leaks in the fucking wall, so it's like a dam ready to burst. Yeah. Uh, so that's right, it's a bloody nightmare trying to. I've given up. If people didn't want to fucking listen, they can fuck off, is basically my current situation, even though they need to listen more than ever, but they didn't, so fuck them. You get nothing for abuse for trying to help. So unless somebody asks me or comes on my page, you know, and engages me in a civil manner, I'm not going to go looking for arguments anymore. Oh, well, thanks, Stephen. You know, I don't buy normal shit. I find stuff, and if I like it along the way, it's usually a jumbo sale or a piece of dead man's clothing. Uh, <clears throat> but I do like different clothes. I hate all this top man stuff, you know. But the th thing is, when I do these live cams, I can't wear the same one every night, even though I'm wearing the same clothes every day. I have to change it for a, for a live stream. 
<laughs> so I've got a whole cupboard of clothes that are just on rotation. They've probably had about nine or ten wars each. <laughs> probably all need a big wash. Emma! <laughs> uh, film director. Yeah, he staged the first one. I have to get that video because it's in the, in the middle of a 90 minute, or oh, sorry, a 30 minute video. It's one Steve Walker sent me recently. In fact, it's a really good one. Did I share it? It's a Vimeo one. Hold on. I think I've got it here, right? Let me see if I can find it. I think it's in this video here. It is in this one. So, uh, this is worth watching this. And there's actually the other videos that these guys do on their Vimeo channel. are pretty cool. In the, in the last one they done, uh, I can't remember the title of it, but basically he mentioned the Getty. Uh, so it's quite interesting we watch that. Check it out. So that's that. And the, the media is antichrist. Basically, I think everyone who's listening to their ego, I think the ego is like the antichrist. So if you're an ego, I think you're service to, service to self. You're only interested in your, your, your own world and protecting your ego. That's why you're going to these jobs and doing what you need to do, wearing your mask, because it's a way of protecting yourself. And your ego doesn't know anything else. So those people are like that, but those that have got empathy and, you know, basically maybe old souls or whatever, we want to help people. That's why we're trying to tell them this information. We're service to others. And that's because we're listening to a right-hand side of our brain. We're more in tune with the higher vibrations. We've kind of put the ego down a bit and uh, trained the ego to be subservient to the higher uh, levels of intuition, wisdom, so you're not a slave to it. Obviously, the ego tries to butt in now and again. You know, say, fucking him, he's a fucking prick, fucking hell. Blah, blah. But you have to try and get back on an even keel as quickly as possible. And the more you do that, I think the more you can create a better world for yourself because then you project, you, you have visions of a happier future. But right now, obviously, it's hard to dream of future and dreams and all that because all that's been yanked away from us. All this idea of being a rock star, which was never really true anyway because they were controlling it all. But the idea of being creative and do something good, even though everyone else is working a shit job, seems to all disappear. I think we'll have to... There's a fork in the road coming up one way or another, and maybe not everyone's going to make it. Maybe it's all a choice. Can you realise this vaccine stuff is a pile of shit? Because to me, they're making it so obvious that it is. Then, if you can't figure it out, do you deserve to live? Do you deserve to have babies? Maybe it's the way to fucking say that you shouldn't procreate because you're fucking obviously genetically stunted. So, that sounds a bit harsh. I know people can wake up at different times and stuff like that, but ultimately, we really need to fucking, I don't know, stop them in their tracks as soon as possible. I was writing that stuff over 20 years ago and uh, it's been quite torturous. It's even more now, obviously. So, Stevens, he's got a song in the chorus. Got a dead man's boots on my feet and the stars are in my hands. With a twist of fate, we will create all your unanswered plans. Yeah. Got a dead man's boots on my feet. Well, that's like most of my clothes, eh? My trainers are dead man's. Uh, I like my tartan, my tartan shoes. What do they call those 50 rock and roller type shoes? They've got a name. Teddy boys used to wear them. So they're original. I bought them. And the stars are in my hands. With a twist of fate, we will create all your unanswered plans. Aye, cool. Stevens uh, had a song in that grunge fest. I've put it on a CD. Look. This is for the car. Grunge Fest. I downloaded the album. So one of Stephen's songs are on here. It's a really cool song. And some other great tracks on that. If you want to share the link again, Stephen. I'm just blabbing here. Uh, I don't know. Did you enjoy that the night? Was that all right to, to watch me go through that? Do you, <sighs> do you prefer shooting the shits when I just rant? I just rant at, at these guys. <laughs> The virus. Look at them. I mean, take a look at this motley crew. Oh, I don't even like putting their picture anywhere. You know, that's what I'm saying about creating a reality. Why do we want to focus? Why do we get? Why do I know somebody called Chris Whitty? Look at him. That guy is fucking. He gives me the creeps. Matt Hancock, Gordon Brown. There's a bit in my book as well. Uh, politically incorrected. 
that uh, talks about Gordon Brown ramming a baseball back down his throat, basically. <laughs> make, makes me laugh. Uh, what's my prediction for Parliament debating mandatory vaccines? There's, there's no debating. No, Parliament are illegal. They're criminals to the fucking core. The whole thing's criminal. It shouldn't, doesn't have any power. They're just writing these statutes. We didn't need to obey them unless we're under their fictitious straw man legal corporation that they've all got into everyone controlled because the whole thing is fucking on, built on sand. <laughs> Especially since I, uh, Magna Carta, Article 61, 2001 was invoked. You get what I mean? 1215 Magna Carta. And uh, <clears throat> so anything these guys talk about Trump and fucking Biden and anything in the Commonwealth certainly, governments are all there illegally. So it's all a big scam. So people need to wake up to that and uh, break the contract with the state by doing Article 61. And then we can all go down to Parliament and rightfully take it over. Because they have no right to be there. And they're writing laws as if they're somehow superior to the rest of man. Apparently we're all created equal. So we should all be under the same rule. And all rules should be there to serve man, not to fucking enslave us. So when are we going to stand up to that? When are we going to realise, stop these protests, stop chasing things on Facebook forever and arguing with fucking idiots? Basically get on the case, start doing this paperwork and sending it off as quickly as possible and then look out for a call of people who want to go to your local police station. I'm still waiting for people in Falkirk to contact me so we can go to the police station and serve them a notice of treason. Uh, getting carried out by the higher levels of the government with evidence and asking them to take action on it. Because that's called doing the right thing, doing the duty under the only constitutional law in effect. It's not been a, it's not a bad thing, it's your duty to do it. That's what it was written for. It's for the people to stop a tyrannous government, which is quite evident. Which is why I wrote that thing 25 years ago. I could see it fucking then. I don't know how people... Still, I told people 25 years ago and the same folk are still ready to line up same people who I mentioned in that fucking video are still going to take the vaccine. It's mental. Aye, the money raised goes to Diabetes UK and uh, that's another thing they've even said in America that uh, diabetes patients are now on do not resuscitate. Is it in America? Aye. So, what the fuck's going on? They're obviously trying to do genocide and, you know, they've told us. So why aren't we fucking standing up? Maybe some people, as I say, maybe it's just a way to get rid of the fucking numpties. Aye? Beginning of dissent, this is when the freedom's more precious than honey. People are just clinging on to these jobs, like the nurse. So oh, I'm a nurse, didn't he fucking threaten me? But her job and what she believes is irrelevant compared to the truth that her family and that's going to have to take a fucking vaccine to shit far less fucking walk out your front door. So... Aye, it's pretty mad what's coming down, unless we all get together. And, you know, I'm telling people all this stuff, and still people are posting stuff about 99% survival rates from the virus, when a virus is not contagious at all in the slightest. It's a piece of dead cell debris. And, aye. Oh, there's another, uh, there's another good 10-minute explanation, not from Don and David, but from this guy, it's on the Bob Stagnito page, but I'll share it on my wall just after this. That guy is really good at putting it down what a virus is. It's so fucking simple if people actually take the time to look at it and ask for evidence of what they're saying it does. Because they've no fucking got any. So why? how are we getting past that point talking about masks and ventilators and shit? You know, I didn't know I had the coronavirus until I voluntarily got tested. I'm glad I got tested. The government told me I'm sick, even though I felt great. I would never have known. You can't have an illness and be ill if you're not showing any symptoms. It's a bottom fucking line. The vast majority of folk have spoken against the vax. Aye. There are no viruses. Well, a virus is dead cell debris. They've just got this name as a virus. Certainly nothing that travels through air. It's just a little piece of fragment of a cell, basically. Aye. Yeah, germ theory. Basically, that pastor guy, apparently he admitted on his deathbed that it was false, but also apparently he knew for quite some time and it was designed 
to run with it. Same with Fauci and all that. They just don't care. It suits the agenda, this idea. So he's quite heavily complicit, Louis Pasteur, in what he was doing. He was knowingly doing it. It wasn't like he was just doing it and he, he thought that himself. I think he, he knew it was bullshit for the get-go. Aye? You will own nothing. You will be happy. And this guy's just fucking appeared, doesn't he? Klaus Schwab, the Soviet Union. And this image of this virus, it doesn't exist. They've never isolated it, so there's no you know, specific virus that's ever been isolated. Because they're all just different fragments of different things, so they give, give them all the names under the sun. None of them have actually been proved to exist. Emperor Ming, aye. Aye. So, let's do another one, shall we? Turning into a wee shooting the shit at the end here. It's good to shoot some shit, I guess. <laughs> the reason you don't see this as wrong is because you're being sedated by it. It's fucking the chemtrails, aye. Apparently there's less oxygen in the air these days. So people have got respiratory problems, which they say is uh, caused by corona. But also the 5G is probably quite bubbling away in the background as well, which is going to get ramped up, especially after the vaccine. It's such an obvious fucking plan. All this shit's tied together, you know. We've been sprayed with these chemtrails forever. So what was all that in aid of to begin with? To basically change the atmosphere, which is going to genetically get ready to change us. Make us, fuck knows, ready to become something else. Human 2.0, whatever. You can share the photo of the guy with the beard about testing for a virus. With no symptoms, please. Can I share the photo of the guy with the beard about testing for a virus with no symptoms? I'm not sure what that photo is. Shooting this shit is much needed. It saves ending up. It saves ending up with a dose of the brown water. What's that mean? <laughs> you've got to shoot the shit. Ah, right. So if you don't shoot the shit down, you've got diarrhea or something like that. <laughs> uh, aye. Let's do. We'll, we'll we'll change this one up. Fancy a wee poem. Here's a here's a seven minute poem. The ayahuasca one I was going to do the other day. Let's try this one. Uh, so this is based on a true story. I took some ayahuasca. That picture there is from the time I done it in Bristol, which is about the last four four times I took it. Uh, I took it thirteen times in total, but this a poem I think is based on the first time. Here we go. We'll. Give you the shin. The Aya Ceremony. I attended an ayahuasca healing ceremony where I drank 12 cups of revolting liquid, even though I can't for sure it would make us sick and turn my feces into gallons of runny fluid. The reason for my day in such a silly hang was because it apparently facilitates healing and after all the trauma I've been through I had shut myself off to who I am feeling. The eye supposedly drains your negativity into your stomach where it can come out two ways through your mouth along with your bile and out your arse for what feels like days. For the first few hours I was the sick yince while everyone else was puking into a pail. But I was running back and forth to the bog, leaving behind us a brown vapour trail. On about my twentieth visit, I finally retched. My stomach decided it was time for eject mode. I stuck my head inside the supplied spew bucket and cried out to God as I finally emptied a load. I was over the hump and what a relief. I could now appreciate my heightened state. Although I wouldn't recommend it to just any in unless they want to quickly lose weight. No just physically but also psychologically as the next morning my hair was as licked as a feather. I kept something inside me had changed. 
I just hoped my arsehole could be put back together. The shaman that conducted the ceremony asked us all who we were feeling. Pretty good was the general consensus, despite us all spending half the nacht kneeling. I spent the rest of the day attending his workshop, which was all about us taking our power back, guiding meditations to cut mental chains of bondage. Society's sheep would certainly call him a quack. I am the claiming he should replace your doctor. They both proclaim they have healing knowledge. Yin says that God left all we need on the planet, and the other says that God didn't go to medical college. I am just majorly cynical towards Big Pharma. For instance, I refuse to give my son a single vaccine. No just cause I didn't want to poison his blood, but also cause the profit margin is beyond obscene. The shaman claims that taking the jungle medicine will he strengthen my natural immunity and going through that ordeal with 20 strangers certainly gave us a shared sense of community. Isn't that what we are lacking most these days? Maybe people need to get together and ship more often because another side effect of purging in public it encourages even the most hardened ego to soften. We are holding so much emotions bottled inside. We panic at the thought of exposing our fears. When you take ayahuasca, they get flushed out. And you get to meet the real you after all these years. I'm surprised myself at how much I've changed. No, I didn't even need to get stoned to hear a wank. I have stopped watching porn 24-7 and have got a talking plant for the jungle to thank. Of course there are those who say it is dangerous, and I wouldn't deny that their claims are true. The shaman's job is to remove demons for your aura, but some can also get in there while using this brew. That's why it should only be taken with respect in a controlled environment with an experienced healer. It is certainly no a recreational pastime drug. If it was, you'd be hearing serious words with your dealer. Saying, Oi, you didn't warn me about the effects. The retching and puking was like a normal Friday night. But getting chased by dragons and enormous snakes. Well, that is the fucking epitome of fight or flight. I spent the whole night running from my shadow. In the end, I had to turn around and face the monster. When I challenged it to a duel to the death, I realised that my life was controlled by an imposter. So now I have to give up all my psychological crutches and face life like a man instead of a whipping boy. I conquered a demon that I realised wasn't me now I have no more excuses not to live a life of joy. I can't bury my head and pretend I am evolving when I buy six super lager and a bottle of Bucky. You have changed my whole life and I have lost all my pals. I just hope the new improved me will also get lucky. As I said, no every inch should partake in the brew. After all, wasn't it pharmacia warned about in the Bible, but in the short term, to help you get back on track, maybe shitting your brains out will help you stop being your ain rival. The only thing is that I keep seeing mad mental crazy shit. Yesterday in the mirror I saw my eyeballs turn black. Apparently that wasn't an after effect of the eye. That just happens when you go back on the crack. So, that was that, Yen. I went to Amsterdam. It's legal in Amsterdam to take ayahuasca as a religious sacrament. 
So taking it with the shaman and stuff like that, it was done in a kind of religious ceremony. I've got some uh, videos in the dark of the shamans. He's going, hey, John, hey, John, hey, John, you hey, John, 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 hey, so it's quite well. She was watching it. There's, there's another video I've got uh, of a voodoo ceremony. And you see him getting possessed by three different voodoo gods. And that's quite wild. And then he's having a conversation with them. Uh, aye. Okay, should maybe do some, show you some old videos and talk about some stuff like that. I don't know. If I had the time and energy and editing team, you can. I've often wondered if there's somebody there with time and effort. I've got I've got my whole life in video. They could do an awesome documentary. I need to get famous, and then it'll give them a reason to do it, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. Yeah, thanks, thirteen folks. We've done about an hour. Will we do any more of these? What's this one? Uh, what's that then? At first glance, I'd say you had an arrow through your head, but I'll run a COVID test just to make sure. That's the level we're getting to. It's so much fakery, it's unreal. Uh, what else have we got? What's this one? Aye. This elderly woman want, asked to be euthanized because she had too much loneliness and they've done it. They fucking killed her. I said, okay. There's lots of them actually doing it uh, without asking. They're getting euthanized here. Life, end of life drugs or something they're called. Aye. Whoops. Put too much up there. So, aye, poor wee woman, eh? Greatest scam to enslave mankind is the old money. And uh, bankers charging interest, something created out of thin air. When you apply for a loan, you just get 10 times that. You apply for a 10 grand loan and they can then lend out 100 grand, a grand based on that. That's called fiat currency, which is a big scam. The money only has the value that we give it has no inherent value because it's not backed by gold. But again, they'll tell us all this and tell us we're going to Sarah Jasara or some other magical thing to get us all on a... They even tried to do it in some shops, you know, no money allowed because the virus is stuck there, even though there is no virus. So you attract into your life a reflection of what you think. We also track that what you judge. So try not to judge the normies, I guess. If you think people are dishonest, you get dishonest people. It's hard, though, when you've got dishonest people around you not to keep thinking of, thinking of them as that. If you're focused on sickness or disease, like COVID, we're all fucking focused on. Poverty or lack, aye, we're all losing our jobs. We thought, you know, basically the lockdown's illegal, so people should be keeping their businesses open. And then we don't have money. Everyone, uh, everything you hold in your conscious thought becomes your cage in reality. Reality. What's the bottom bit? See abundance. See honesty, embrace good. Is that a good wee message to leave things on? Aye. So that's been tonight. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and be back later. Depends if I can set up the system to interview Stephen D. Kelly, or I might do that on Skype and post that one on YouTube. Oh, aye. If he's want a fucking free system, right? If you want to build a website or make some money selling websites and pay no money to do so, basically, you go to this www. Aye. So, you can also sell stuff on there. It's got a shop and a page builder for free. It's quite high quality. If you want that, you Selling for free, pay me. Take it or leave it. Thanks for watching, folks. That's been this in. Take care. Over and out. Bye-bye.